Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into uh, FRC robots, what makes them work, and we got a really cool 2021 robot here, so can't wait to show that off. Today I'm here with team number 4265, Secret City Wildbots from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. 4265 is truly one of the hidden gems in first, with success dating back to 2012 with a Rookie All-Star Award. Since then, they've had five event wins, including a division win and world finals appearance competing with my old team, and also three engineering inspiration awards. In 2020, they had a chance to play at the Arkansas Regional, where they had a playoff berth, and took home their first chairman's award. Uh, for the 2021 at-home challenges, they were finalists in their group, and we have a 2021 rollout here. Can't wait to show it off. And I'm here today with Adam and Amelie, and as mentioned, we're going to dive into this 2021 robot. I'd love to see robots that are really made for the at-home challenges. So you're going to get all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Adam, uh, tell me a bit more about this 2021 robot. Uh, I'd love to see no shooter on this robot, right? Because for the uh, what you decided to do for the at-home challenges wasn't necessarily required. So love to hear as we go uh, into the intake and the hopper, some of the design and how specifically you tailored it for the at-home challenges. Yeah, so this year we decided to stick to the three uh, driving and intake challenges. Um, so we didn't put a shooter on this robot. Um, that was because we wanted to focus on some of the more simple aspects, as well as develop our drivetrain um, more under COVID restrictions because we didn't have as much shot time. So this robot is really designed about around being lightweight. So our intake is a four bar design. Um, it is powered by um, a Falcon motor. Um, so it comes down on both sides um, and being lightweight, we're using some small um, polycarbonate tubes as our rollers, which we found the ball, the power cells really stick to. Um, we're using 3D printed hubs to keep them captive. And we keep our head shops captive as well. That way don't, we don't have to run them all the way across the intake rollers to save weight. And we have a top roller that's passive and smaller. Um, this helps when the intake is down um, it keeps the balls from hitting the top roller and flying out of the uh, front of the robot. Um, some of the other material choices we made, the plates, um, we CNC'd. Um, the front plates are out of HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. And um, we did this because it's super easy and quick to machine. Um, and it's pretty compliant um, and structurally sound. Uh, on the longer plates, because the HCP was Boeing, we have this impact resistant polycarb that fulfills a similar role being compliant, but also very strong um, and a little more rigid. So we didn't have as much problems with Boeing. Uh, so Adam, I want to ask you about the spacing on the rollers of your intake. How did you come up with, uh, you know, you got the front two are pretty close together. Uh, the third one on top there seems to be a bit more further apart. Can you just talk to me about uh, some of the, either the math or just some of the intuition that went into how you spaced uh, your rollers there? Yeah, so this entire robot was actually designed in CAD. So what we did is we kind of mapped the front surface of our robot, um, and then we drew a tangent path that the ball would follow. Um, and based off of that, we could space our rollers accordingly to get consistent compression. Um, another thing of note is that our bottom roller is actually bigger than the top two. Uh, this helped um, kind of make up for some of our compression um, with the floor, as well as increase on um, the surface speed of the bottom roller, which helped grab up the balls from the floor so they wouldn't get driven over by the robot. 
Yeah, that's really cool. I love love hearing the decision making and the reasoning behind that sort of thing. So uh, can we go a little bit into your hopper? I mean, obviously, uh, as mentioned, uh, no shooter with it, but I know that your hopper still serves a function uh, for your robot uh, in this uh, challenge. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yes. So our hopper um, primarily is just to hold the balls, but there are a lot of design elements that help keep them in. So this bottom panel um, is not only angled down, but a lot of the problems we ran into with this robot is being able to access our electronics because we had to package things pretty tightly because of our smaller frame. Um, this bottom panel is nicely Velcroed down so it can lift up um, and we can access all of our electronics. Um, same with the front panel so we can have easier access to our front swerve modules. Um, and with the intake again, this top roller all of these things just to make sure when the balls are in the robot, they're not going to come out. Well, Adam, I think that's a great segue into uh, when you talked about your swerve there. I know uh, you have a two-speed shifting swerve, which is really cool. So I'd love to break that down a little bit more and uh, what makes us special and some of the things that go into it. Yes. So we started with swerve in the 2019 off season. Um, and we started by machining um, some modified um, Mark II modules, which are 2910s modules. Um, so we machined them in a house. That way we kind of got some of the experience and really got to um, play with the design. The thing that we modified was adding custom five inch pneumatic wheels, um, which we'll show. Um, but this year we decided we wanted to make another iteration on the design and also implement a shifter. So we flip up our robot, you can see these five inch pneumatic wheels. Oh, wow. So some of the major um, aspects that went into this design decision is for one, um, it kind of helps with keeping all of our four wheels on the ground. Um, we really, because we're also using odometry to track our field position, we wanted to make sure we weren't going to be slipping. So the pneumatic wheels give us some compliance. It really helped last year um, going over a lot of the bars in the center of the field. Um, that way our wheels wouldn't break. And these wheels have uh, great wear properties um, when compared to some of the blue nitrile uh, tread, that kind of thing. We've been running these same wheels for over a year now and haven't had any real problems. So they've been fantastic. I really like how you mentioned that because a lot of teams we have talked to this season with the Blue Nitrile, yeah, they're swapping their uh, their their tread out every few matches in many occasions. So really cool to, to see that uh, how you've taken this and, and reimagined it uh, for your team. And actually, I, I would love to see this on a 2020 robot as well, too, because going over those berms in the middle of the field, I think this would handle that fantastic as well, too. Any thoughts uh, that you've thought about doing something like that at all? So we did have these wheels on our 2020 robot. Um, and during our Arkansas, the Arkansas regional that we were fortunate enough to go to, um, they worked fantastically. Um, even though our robot was designed to go through the trench, we, it opened up a lot of possibilities um, because we weren't forced to. So we found sometimes it was a lot faster if our alliance partners we were cycling through the trench. We could just go through the center of the field, not have to worry about it. Um, also it really helped getting into position to climb, that kind of thing. So these wheels were tested in the 2020 season and they worked great. That, that is really cool to see. I really, really, really like that uh, idea on it. So thank you for showing that off to us. Uh, we're going to be moving over to Amelie, who's going to be talking more about uh, some of the controls and sensors and some of the programming that goes into this uh, robot as well, too. So uh, Amelie, why don't we start out with some of the different sensors that are maybe integrated to the spot and we can go from there. Um. Sure, so we have a bunch of sensors on this robot. Um, so for the pose calculation, we use the integral encoders uh, on the Falcon. Um, and also we use two photo interrupters on each module, one for high gear and one for low gear. And so we use this that we're always using real sensor data to calculate our pose position. And so we know whether each module is in high gear or low gear or transiting between. And we use this for our pose calculations and also to detect any failures so we can stutter the shifter um, if there's any problems. And if that doesn't work, we can detect a shifter failure and shift to low gear. Um, we also use an IMU on the robot for our robot orientation. So we can um, automatically shift to field oriented control. 
um, while driving. And we have a limelight for um, targeting on the power port and for updating our position when we're close. And we also use it in the galactic search challenge so that we know which path we have at the beginning. Um, we track the balls and we look at which one is closest and using the position of the closest ball, we can use that to determine um, which autonomous path we need to run. Something I want to ask you um, is uh, something that Adam brought up was the electronics on your robot, just how cleanly packaged uh, those are in there. Uh, you know, something when we talk to a lot of teams, uh, it seems like sometimes the electrical team gets the short end because they're not really given any consideration uh, when, you know, mechanical design something around that. So uh, you, can you talk a little bit more about just, you know, how your your packaging is done from an electronic standpoint and just why that's so important to your team? Oh, yeah. So, so this year um, we really tried to focus on that. And so um, we have all of our um, electronics, mostly in the center, and you can see that they're all uh, neatly wired um, to each of the modules and underneath so that um, they're less likely to get um, stuck or trapped in anything. Um, and we have a cover on the bottom to prevent um, anything on the bottom from running over and getting into our uh, electrical components. Sure. Can we go a little bit more into uh, some of the uh, programming that goes into your robot, uh, like, you know, looking at like the automed challenges and that sort of thing? Uh, what has gone into consideration for uh, different challenges for the at-home? Um, sure. So a lot of our um, programming um, was you know, made to make like, you know, our driver's lives easier and to uh, account for any failures. Um, so, for example, when we're going at high speeds, we will lock the robot's orientation so that um, it doesn't drift while the robot's driving really fast. Um, also, because it's a shipping swerve, it goes really fast. and We had problems with it tipping over. So we have uh, two lim acceleration limiters, one on the Falcon modes, motors and one in our code. Um, and we also um, lock our angle of each module when we're decelerating so that it won't tip over when it's going really fast. Um, and because we have so many sensors, we can detect failure modes more easily. And whenever we get one of these, we send it to our driver station where um, we have a big red button and also a speaker so that the driver um, can hear which warning is on the robot. So it will say the master caution alarm to alert the driver uh, whenever we have an error on the robot. So there's like literally an audible uh, function that happens to like yell at the driver. Yeah. <laughs> and does it, does it actually work? Because drivers can get in the zone a lot uh, during a match. So do you actually find that that's worked with the drivers? Yeah, we've had problems before. We've, but first we just tried lights. Um, but, you know, the drivers are so focused on the game that they're not paying attention to the lights. So we're trying to make their lives easier by, you know, saying, oh, you have, you know, a module failure. Or, oh, you have this happening so that they can uh, be more prepared when they're driving in their match. Yeah, I mean, the next step, uh, next step sounds like electric shock to me, but, you know, hopefully you don't have to get to that <laughs> spot uh, for it. Well, 40, 4265 Secret City Wallbots, uh, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to tell us about, you, you know, your robot, what's gone into it. I love hearing about the 2021 robots, uh, really ones that are made uh, specifically for some of the at-home challenges. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And, uh, you know, congrats on being finalists in your, in your group and can't wait to see what your team brings in future years. Thanks a lot. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.